If there's one thing I know about Destiny, is that it's a game that's always changing. Over the years, Destiny has implemented tons of new weapons, gear, missions, and annoying abilities. But one aspect of Destiny that has remained largely unchanged over the years are the various enemy races. The aliens that we all like shooting in the face. Never gets old. While I think it's safe to say we've all shot, like, thousands of aliens in the face, I'm not sure if I can say the same when it comes to our knowledge of these enemies. Where they came from, what they want, today we're going to put some info behind these enemies we see so often. And with Destiny 2 Shadowkeep around the corner, I thought that the Hive would be the perfect place to start. To keep the video relatively short, the information in here is going to be on the general side, just as a heads up. But I'm still willing to bet there will be a lot in here the average Destiny player doesn't know. At least enough to make you look at that thrall a little differently next time you encounter them. And for those of you that do know, this should serve as a good refresher for upcoming content. I don't necessarily plan to make tons of these, but if you guys want similar types of videos on the other enemy races in Destiny, let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to make more. Just be sure to let me know who you want to see next. If you end up enjoying this video, a like is super appreciated, and for more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's get into that juicy hive lore. There's a lot of places to potentially start, and frankly, even more places to go from there. There really isn't what I would consider to be a correct order, but I'll try my best to make this as smooth and easy to understand as possible. From an extremely basic standpoint, what are the Hive? Unlike other enemy races in Destiny, the Hive is less of a military and more of a rising force. They base their entire existence around the extermination of other forms of life, especially those that follow the way of the Light and the Traveler, aka you and me. The Hive is also pretty religious, as killing and conquest aren't considered acts of war, but acts of worship. Jesus, Jesus, yeah. The Hive structures delve deep into wherever they lay claim to, unheeding of the damage done in the process. They craft caverns and gothic dungeon-like columns, burrowing themselves deep beneath the surface, as seen in the moon, for example, in Destiny 1. Before we get into the origins of the Hive, I think it's important to talk about their biology. That way you can understand how Hive creatures are born and how they evolve and grow up and all that stuff. It's a dirty job, but someone's gotta do it. Take my hand. We're in this together. The Hive can closely be compared to Earth's insects. Similar to them, the Hive go through several stages of growth during development. With the help of a substance called Mother Jelly, female Hive are able to reproduce. The only fertile females are Hive Wizards, who are capable of either self-fertilization or being with a mate. And I'm gonna leave it there because this isn't a sex ed channel. This does give Omnigal Scream a whole new meaning to me though. Hive originate as eggs or cocoons laid by a special type of wizard known as a brood queen. Upon hatching, newborn hive swallows a worm larvae whole, becoming symbiotic with the worm inside them. These newborn hives grow into thrall, and thrall that survives into maturity become acolytes. Acolytes who have proven themselves can become knights, who in turn may become princes, leading their own broods. So yes, you heard me right. When you are killing Thrall, you are basically killing babies. I mean, look at them running towards you. They just want a hug. Ah! Interestingly and disturbingly enough, the Hive is also capable of changing their sex, similar to different types of fish and plants, as shown through Oryx. Yes, Oryx was originally a female, as you'll see. The oddball of the bunch is the Ogres. Unlike other forms of Hive, they are not in a stage of growth, but become the way they are through a mutation brought upon them by wizard rituals. Speaking of rituals, let's talk about some Hive rituals, man. The Hive has a complex religious system based around the worship of a pantheon of dark gods. These Hive gods exist in a place called the Ascendant Realm, a place locked outside of physical reality. Dwelling within the Ascendant Plane are different throne worlds, which each contain their respective gods' oversoul, protecting them from permanent death should their physical body be destroyed. The Hive has an eternal struggle and hatred of the light, and wants to devour it so darkness can reclaim the universe. The last thing I want to go over before we get into the Hive's history and timeline is their religion. Unlike other religions, the Hive doesn't base theirs around any sort of morality, going as far as to say that morality is a false hope of comfort. Instead of morality, the principle known as the Sword Logic forms the basis of the Hive's belief system. 
According to the sword logic, it is the ultimate goal of intelligent beings to challenge one another for the right to continue existing, acquiring power through victory. Such power must be taken by force. This is why the Hive's swords are so deadly to guardians. They create a bridge in which the wielder saps the power of the victim. This is also why resurrection is seen as heretical to Hive following the sword logic. If the slain were resurrected, it would be contradicting the logic it violated, as the basis of sword logic beliefs is growing stronger after defeating an opponent. This extends to sacrifice, as Hive become ascended by consuming souls of lesser Hive. The Hive's lust for power is a direct reflection of the Worm God's insatiable hunger for light. Even if they wanted to, the Hive can't stop killing or else they would be consumed. The sword logic determines the right to rule, and anyone who cannot defend themselves doesn't deserve to live and will be obliterated. Sounds like a great time. So now that we know about how the Hive are born, how they evolve, what they want, and what they worship, let's get into the origin and story of the Hive leading us up to the story we see in Destiny 1. And I'm warning you, this is the part where pronunciations are going to get a little difficult, so I apologize in advance if I mess up someone's name. The Hive can be traced back to a gas giant known as Fundament. Long ago, presumably in a galaxy far, far away. The Proto-Hive crashed their homeworld into Fundament, apparently to hide from something unknown. Pretty bad accident if you ask me. The shards of their homeworld became a number of continents that floated upon a sea within a layer of the gas giant's atmosphere. Here the Proto-Hive built up a small civilization and forgot their old history. While things were pretty nice, the Hive was not alone, as Fundament at the time was home to hundreds of other intelligent species one of which was the Ammonites, who were overseen by the Traveler and, as you'll see, eventually destroyed by the early Hive. You know how a few sentences ago I said how life was pretty good? Well, that was a lie. On Fundament, life was harsh. Their lifespan really exceeded 10 Fundament years, the Fundament ocean was toxic, the skies were eternally stormy, the rain was poisonous and occasionally corrosive, lightning had enough power to vaporize anyone unlucky enough to be struck, and living clouds known as storm joys would prey on the populace. Some of the early ancestors of the hive were Z Ro, Sithona, and Arash. These three were the daughters of the Osmium King, who ruled a continent on fundament known as the Osmium Court. When the Osmium King was 10 years old, he fell into madness, fearing that a massive tidal wave known as the God Wave was coming. The God Wave would come when Fundament's 52 moons aligned and would destroy all of Fundament's civilizations. Teox, a sterile mother, believed that the daughters were too weak to succeed the king, and thus invited a rival kingdom called the Helium Drinkers into the Osmium Court to kill the royal family and allow Teox to rule the Osmium Court. The Helium Drinkers successfully slew the king, but the three sisters escaped. Over the next few years, the three sisters argued on how to get revenge on Teox. They stumbled upon a ship, salvaged it, and after some discussion, reactivated it with the intended purpose to dive into Fundament's core in the hopes of learning of a way to prevent the God Wave. As they descended, the sisters encountered a vast creature called the Leviathan, not to be confused with Kallus' ship. The Leviathan warned them, telling them that if they proceeded further, they would face a choice between the sky and the deep, the light and the darkness, between left Twix and right Twix, a way of life and a way of death. Pretty big choice, but the sisters were like, nah fam, and kept going, urged by a worm Sithona had saved on the Osmium Court shores. Deep within the Fundament Ocean, the sisters encountered the worms, who drew their power from the darkness itself. The five worms claimed that they had lived in the depths of Fundament for millions of years, trapped by the Leviathan and the Traveler. They had called many species to Fundament, hoping one would be tenacious enough to find them. The worms offered the sisters immorality if they would become the hosts for the worms' larvae, with the caveat that they would cease to obey their own natures. The worms would consume them, and the stronger the sisters became, the stronger the worms' appetite would be. Despite that sounding utterly evil and being a terrible deal, the sisters were like, good enough for me, and accepted the pack. By doing so, Zero took the night morph and became Zivu Arath, Sathona took the mother morph and became Savathun, and Arash took the King Morph and became Oryx. The siblings then returned to their people and spread the worms among them, creating the Hive, liberating the Osmium Court, driving out Teox, building spaceships, and finally breaking out of Fundament. 
While the new hive was forcing the remaining proto-hive to accept worms or perish, Oryx turned his attention to Fundament's moods and the Ammonites who had allied with the Traveler. Initially, he was willing to negotiate with them, but Savathun wasn't having any of that. So as punishment, she killed Oryx, passing his soul to the Ascendant Realm. Oryx got hecka mad for that one and became a merciless tyrant, losing all goodwill and sympathy he had left. Savathun and the Hive then proceeded to exterminate the remaining races of Fundament, including the Ammonites and the Leviathan. As a part of the basis of the sword logic, like most families, the sisters warred and killed one another on a regular basis afterward. Oryx soon came to realize that the worm gods had deceived them. The war of revenge against Teox had turned into a campaign of genocide, and their worm's appetite were growing past their ability to feed them with death. Meaning with his sisters in the Ascendant Realm, they despaired over this dilemma. His sisters offered their power to help Oryx find a way to save them, so Oryx killed them. He used this power to confront the worm god, Akka. Oryx proceeded to kill Akka and stole his ability to call upon the darkness and created the Tablets of Ruin, giving him the power to take. With this, Oryx's transformation was complete, as he changed his name a whopping one letter and became Oryx, the Taken King. Oryx revived Zivu Arath and Savathun and to create a tithing system, which says that all Hive would kill their enemies take some to feed their own worm, and then tie the rest to their superiors, through all the acolytes, acolytes to knights, and so on. Soon Oryx decided to sire his own spawn. The results of this were Crota and the Death Singer twins, Ir Anuk and Ir Halak. The Death Singers came up with the idea of the Oversoul, and Oryx commanded Crota to watch his sisters while he was studying the deep. During this time, Crota was deceived by Savathun, allowing the Vex to enter Oryx's throne world called the High War. This is the part of the story that I believe connects directly to Shadowkeep, presumably the next raid boss. I did an entire video talking about this one event alone, so if you're curious to learn about what the Vex did during the war with Oryx and how they can potentially connect to the story of Shadowkeep, you can follow the button showing up in the top right corner of your screen right now. Angered by his son's imperfection, Oryx threw Crota into the Vex gate network, decreeing that he returned vicious or die forgotten. Jeez, Dad. The frick, man. <laughs> Crota would eventually make up for his mistakes, becoming a god himself and being a vital source of the tithe. But Oryx took no chances and moved the High War into a mighty dreadnought skirmish from the remains of Akka. Savathun decided to enter a black hole with her fleets around a race called the Harmony, believing that they would become stronger for it. Zivu Arath took her fleets away from Oryx as she felt he constrained her too much. Crota pursued the Traveler, colonizing the moon, and Oryx continued his crusade alone and ruminated on the future. And this leads us to the events we see in Destiny. The battle against Crota in the Dark Below, the war against Oryx in the Taken King, the rise and fall of Zol in Warmind, and much, much more going on in the background during other events such as the Siva Crisis and the Red War. All of this leads us to what we're about to see come September, as Aeris Morn awakens evils long thought to be forgotten, deep beneath the moon's surface. Obviously, I could keep going on and continue explaining all that happens during the events that we actually play, but this video is getting kinda long, so this is where I'm going to leave it today. If you do want to see a recap of those events, just let me know and I can make that happen in a part two to this video. And as I've said before, if you'd like, to see me make similar videos on the other Destiny enemy races, like the Fallen, the Cabal, the Vex, Taken, whatever, tell me down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, if you could please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.